Hi, I'm your host, Casey Johnson Oxsoy, and this is the Pleasurehood Podcast, a podcast where we explore what it means to be a mother, a leader, and an all around badass from a place of pleasure, empowerment, and turn on. I am here to revolutionize how humans experience sex, pleasure, and motherhood by normalizing self care normalizing having desires, and normalizing mothers as sensual and sexual beings. Quick side note, you don't have to be a mother in order to listen to this podcast. Though I create my work with mothers in mind, this conversation is really for everyone. I truly believe that pleasure is one of many paths of healing, and I'm here to highlight how to walk that path no matter who you are. It is my deepest desire that Wherever you find yourself on this amazing journey we call life, you can experience your power, your turn on, and of course, orgasmic pleasure. In this week's episode, we'll be exploring the sexual seasons and life cycles. Understanding what sexual season and life cycle I'm in has transformed how I navigate my sexual and sensual expression. So often, we're operating outside of a season that no longer serves us or resonates with where we currently are in life. But society tells us that we must always be ready and willing to have sex, be sexual, or be sexually expressed, when maybe that's not the season we're in. Knowing which season or life cycle you are in will allow you to have a powerful relationship with your sexuality and will lead you to a more fulfilling sex life. So let's get into it. I hope you enjoy this episode. I was a sexual being before I became a mother. In fact, I was celebrated for it. I was so deeply in my sensuality, it became the way I moved in the world, the way I walked, talked, conversed with the world. It was my way of connecting to the deepest parts of myself. It was how I healed my connection to my body, and it was how I healed my connection to my husband. This knowingness that I was a sexual being, that I was sex, walking, and talking, that I could powerfully reclaim this truth for myself was so empowering. But when I became a mother, this understanding of myself came to a stop. It's as if someone turned off the sexual faucet and the well that once flowed so freely was now dry. I felt nothing. I felt so disconnected and so disembodied from myself. I didn't know who I was. You see, my sexuality gave me permission to paint my life with such a beautiful broad brush. But after baby, the brush was still there, but the paint was gone. I was just at the beginning of a deep sexuality journey when I got pregnant. And I'm not going to lie, pregnancy muddled that journey a little. I didn't want to have sex while I was pregnant. I didn't experience sexual desire. I didn't feel that rush of sexual lust that pregnant women are apparently supposed to feel. I would masturbate from time to time if the mood felt right, but mostly out of obligation to my sexual studies and exploration. And almost after two years of being postpartum, I'm still navigating my sexuality and what it means to be a sexual creature as a mother, as a partner, and as a human. I am left to define my arrows, my lust, my desire, and my passion on my own. And to be honest with you, I've come up with nothing. Sometimes I have no desire whatsoever. Of course, I love the flirting and the intimacy that I have created with my husband. I love hugging and kissing and rubbing one another down, but I just have zero desire to be penetrated. And I also feel zero lust. And for a long time, I thought this was something to fix. But what I'm realizing is that this is something that wants time, space, and a lot of compassion. 
I don't have to fix it or make it better because there's nothing wrong. I am just in another evolution of my sexuality. And this time it's asking for some breathing room. I share all this because society would have us believe that sexuality, A, doesn't ebb and flow with time, life experiences, body changes, emotional changes, life changes, and so on and so forth, and B, that our sexuality is a one-size-fits-all experience. We're expected to like, want, and do sex the way that we've always done it. Our taste isn't supposed to change. Our desires aren't supposed to change. Our way of thinking and experiencing sex isn't supposed to change. But I call bullshit. I see sexual desire, eros, sensuality as a living, breathing entity. A relationship that we are meant to breathe new life into. A relationship that sometimes craves attention and other times needs time and space to work itself out. If you're feeling super sexy, erotic, and lusty and need to express that, go for it. I invite you to lean into it and do it. But if you're feeling turned off, numb, disconnected, hey, that's okay too. We all go through various sexual seasons. And instead of trying to fight, or resist the season you're in, thinking that you need to be in a season that currently doesn't resonate with you, sex is going to feel gross. And it's going to feel like another thing on a to-do list, something you have to engage in because that's what's expected of you, especially if you're in a partnership. And learning about sexual seasons has allowed me to embrace what I was feeling and going through and also allowed me to stop judging myself and making myself wrong. So you must be wondering, what exactly is a sexual season? Well, as we all know, life, nature has its cycles. We see the days grow shorter, colder, darker, and then it leads to warm air of summer and into the cooler nights of fall, ushering in the dark nights of winter and welcoming the freshness of spring. In each season, we find ourselves either retreating, going inward, wanting to spend more time indoors, going slower, taking our time, or becoming more social, desiring connection, wanting to be outdoors, exploring the possibilities of life. And just to be clear, like these cycles can be experienced not only just with the actual seasons or, um, you know, the actual year. Like sometimes you are feeling super social, even though technically it's winter and you want to go in, like you're supposed to go inward. Um, Or you can go through all these cycles within a day. Like I can tell you when I wake up, I am just like closed off to the world. I want to be by myself. It's really hard for me to be social, especially with my two-year-old. And throughout the day, I just become more and more and more alive till honestly the nighttime where I feel most alive, which is usually after four o'clock and I'm like ready to go and I'm super social and I want to like talk my husband's ear off. (laughs) So Life cycles and like seasonal cycles can happen outside of like the actual realms of nature. So our sexuality is the same. It goes through various cycles and seasons. Our sexuality isn't stagnant. It changes with our life, ebbing and flowing with our body's wants and needs. When we are in deep connection with the natural cycle and season of our sexuality and honestly just our life, you might experience sexual spring and that may be a good time to experience our turn on, sexual vibrancy, our connection to pleasure and an opportunity for orgasmic expansion. Sexual summer creates time and space for orgasmic expression. 
In this season, you may experience waves of pleasure, which will slowly bring you to the end of your sexual expression. And it's like a big crescendo to your sexual expression. Sexual fall is the perfect time to drop back into your body, especially as you release and bring your time of full sexual expression to an end. And this season also provides you space to integrate your experience from the spring and summer seasons. Sexual winter is a time of deep rest. This is a time to go slow, perhaps leaning more into your sensual expression. In this season, you complete your sexual cycle and prepare to enter into the cycle again by returning to spring. It's actually a really beautiful flow to be in. When you honor your seasons, you honor your body's needs to move at its natural sexual flow. The timing and transitions of this is 100% your own, and you can define what each part means for you. But again, bringing it back to society, we have become disconnected from the natural flow of life. We no longer follow our body's cycle or our life cycle. We force ourselves to be in seasons that don't resonate with us. And our society doesn't really value slowing down and taking time out to navigate how we're feeling or to explore new ways of being. It is a constant like go, go, go. And because of this, some of us may find ourselves in seasons that don't match the part of our cycle we are currently in. Or we get stuck in seasons and find it difficult to move on from, you know, move on from them in a natural flow. You may push your way through winter because we are not taught to value slowing down, taking time to rest and renewing our energy. And you may push yourself to move on to spring because spring and summer are often valued more than winter or fall. When you get stuck in spring, you may be experiencing turn on, but not experiencing the satisfying orgasmic release that you truly desire. And when you're stuck in summer, you may find that your sexual experiences feel unfulfilling. You might feel disconnected. And it can feel like it's just something that you do out of obligation and you're not having like that vibrant orgasmic experience that you deeply crave. So you may be asking like, this is great information, Casey, but like, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing with this information? And what do I do if I find myself stuck in a sexual season? So... There's a few things that have served me through the years and honestly, quite recently. And the first is to be honest about where you currently are in your sexual journey. This is probably the hardest part, especially if you've never admitted to yourself that you've been avoiding sex because you just haven't been feeling sexual or you're not currently interested in sex. The first step is to get really quiet and be honest about where you currently are in your sexual journey. Do your best to approach it with no judgment, which is incredibly hard, yet it's incredibly necessary. Once you've identified which sexual season you're in, then you can begin to be honest about which season would be most healing for you to be in. If you feel you're stuck in winter because that's just how it's been for so long, I invite you to begin exploring what it would feel like for you to begin taking steps to unthaw and enter into spring. What would it feel to slowly heat yourself up? And what would that look like for you? And what would that feel like for you? What would be the safest route? If you're currently in a summer season and you deep down know it's time for you to begin exploring like entering into fall, sit down and take a moment to listen to your body. What needs healing? Do you need to rest? What sexual experiences do you need to integrate into your body? And three, be gentle with yourself. Show yourself deep love and compassion. It can be a lot to identify which season you're in and what season it may be time to cycle into. It can feel scary 
And the process can be filled with so many unknowns, but I invite you to see it as an opportunity to grow in your sexual expression and expand your sexual capacity, which allows you to connect to your body in ways you never knew was possible. So perhaps a few questions you can ask yourself is, what signals am I receiving from my body related to my current sexual desires? Are my desires in line with the season that I've been in or that I'm currently in? Are there moments I can identify where I was engaging in my sexuality from a disconnected place? If so, how can I learn from those moments? Based on what season I'm currently in, what practices can I integrate into my routine to explore the path to my next season? For me personally, I know I'm currently in winter and my body needs some time to integrate my experiences from spring, summer, and fall, where I went from maiden to creatrix to mother. I know it's a process I have to honor in my own time. And as I slowly begin to see signs of spring, I know for me, I don't want to rush into a season that may be too much too soon, only to return to winter and possibly get stuck there. I want to go with the natural flow. And as I find myself in winter, I lean more into my sensual expression, loving my body and, you know, my slow sexual emergence, dancing, caressing my body, flirting with my man, and rebirthing a new intimacy that we're creating as new parents. There is no rush just love and compassion. I do look forward to spring though. I'm looking forward to my body warming and thawing, feeling the flow that comes from the snow and ice melting, creating the wellspring of overflow that will make way to more life, more sun, more heat, more movement, more expression. There is nothing wrong with where you currently find yourself. I want you to know, and if you take anything from this like podcast episode, there is nothing wrong with where you currently find yourself. It is all a part of the process. It is all an opportunity for going deeper and seeing what needs to be seen, feeling what needs to be felt, and healing what needs to be healed. You are doing it, my love, and I am celebrating you every step of the way. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode and exploration in sexual seasons and life cycles. I look forward to taking this journey with you one step at a time. Make sure to tune back in in two weeks for episode six, where I'll be talking with the pussy fairy herself, Azaria Menezes. We'll be exploring motherhood, sex, and pleasure. It's a really yummy, sultry, and sexy conversation that we have and you won't want to miss it. If you're currently listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review. It would mean so much to me if you showed your support. I would really appreciate it. And also, I just really love hearing from you and hearing your thoughts on the podcast. Also, if you're ready to explore pleasurable motherhood and explore what it would look like for you to mother from a place of vibrancy, energy, and deep body, mind, and soul connection, then my study course, From Burnout to Radiant, is for you. From Burnout to Radiant is your guide to creating easy, practical steps to getting your sexy back in a fun and pleasurable way. I promise it won't feel like another thing to add to your to-do list. I created this self-study guide with busy moms in mind, and I wanted this guide to feel effortless so it is easy to integrate into your everyday life. 
If this sounds like something that you're interested in, you can head to my Instagram at K-C-C-A-S-E-Y dot A-K-S-O-Y and go to my bio and get instant access. All right, beauties. That's all I have for you today. I am sending you so much love, pleasure, and sexy vibes your way. And until next time, stay wild, sexy, and free.